Hi, Dean here with more natural health retailing and business advice. Before we get started, I'd like to suggest you visit my website, www.deanparks.com, where I have video training series, articles, podcasts, and industry news specific to the natural product industry that I think would be helpful for most independent businesses. You can sign up for my free weekly um, industry news on my website where I cover some of the latest business news, trends, upcoming events, and just some practical business tips. Today's training is going to be focused on merchandising. A lot of the ideas I share are ideas I picked up since I became lucky enough to become a co-owner of a health food store back in 1975. Merchandising it ranks second to customer service to increasing your sales and keeping customers coming back. So to me it's an extremely important um, part of your business to uh, focus on on a regular basis. Back in the late 90s, large consumer packaged goods companies began to take their marketing money from traditional TV, radio, magazine, and put it where the consumer shops, in store, with displays, coupons, contests, staff perks, etc. These have become the norm in the conventional grocery and pharmacy trade. <clears throat> so this is a prime focus to sell consumer packaged goods at shelf level merchandising. As an independent retailer, I believe it's important you make merchandising a priority. Work with your suppliers to come up with ways to create a store full of shopping impulses. So let's get started. Started. Merchandising. So why merchandise? According to Paco Underhill, who wrote the book Why We Buy, if impulse shopping stopped, the economy would collapse. So it's extremely important when you merchandise that you think of all the impulse opportunities in your store because it's been proven when customers come in to shop in your store, they may come in looking for three or four items, but if you looked at when they left the store, they probably bought seven or eight items. So the more impulse opportunities you have, the more, the more sales you will have in your store. So something that's really important is you've got to watch the tone of your, your business, your store. The selling space of your store is sacred ground and should be treated as such. Remember, women especially shop with all their senses tuned in. The feel of your store should be positive, healthy, caring, and energetic. Every person while working the floor should be aware of the importance of maintaining positive energy. Things to leave in the back room before serving on the selling floor are criticism, complaining, arguing, poor manners, gum, excuses, and any other behavior that does not contribute in a positive way to your customer's shopping experience. Hey, we all have bad days, just bet to keep from spreading them to your customers. Let's start. Let's start with you, your merchandising, because that's where it's really important is your own personal merchandising. How you look, the words you use, so your tone of voice, your body language, your energy level, all these are important when the customer comes in your store. It's been shown that the words we use account to about 7% of the impact of a communication between two people, whereas the tone of voice, um, your body language, like the clothes you're wearing, if you have a slouch, these have a bigger impact. For instance, if somebody comes into your store and asks you, hey, do you have something to help give me more energy? And you go, oh yeah, we got this over here. It's a pretty good product. I hear it gives you lots of energy. Obviously, that's not going to have the impact, even though the words you said were what they wanted to hear, that the product would work. So when you think of merchandising first, start with yourself, start with your staff. That's extremely important. <clears throat> and when it comes to your fashion, try and dress one level above your customer. So name badges. Uh, building re relationships with customers is key to improving sales. Um, I found early on I, I was a little resistance to wearing a name badge. I thought, wait, what do I need a name badge for? But I had a customer one time come in and I knew their name and I'd always say, hey, hi Mary, how are you doing? And one day Mary stopped and looked at me and said, you know, I always feel uncomfortable when you say hi Mary and I don't know your name. So it's important your customers get to know your name because then it's a relationship when you both know each other's names. 